Okay, so we've just talked about what A does and what B does in this transformation, so let's talk about C. Now C, this is within the brackets again, so this does something kind of weird. This does uh, what we call a um, horizontal translation. In other words, it shifts it left or right. Okay, this is really important here, horizontal translation. And that's about it, this is really all we need. So whatever C is, it just tells us if it's left or right. Now keep in mind though that it goes opposite to what you might think. Okay, so opposite to what you might think. In other words, something like this one right here for example. Let's just do maybe this example here. So we have y equals sine of x minus pi over 2. You might think, okay, well that means we're going to have a sine graph. Let's just, before anything else, let's figure out what is the amplitude. It really helps to draw that, so or write that out. So the amplitude is the number in front of the sign, so that's just 1. The period is going to be, well, what's b? In this case, b is just a 1 in front of it, because we don't really see the number here. So we'll say the period is not 1, but it's going to be you know, 2 pi over b. And when b is 1, it's just going to be 2 pi over 1, so therefore the period is just 2 pi. In other words, we're going to draw something, at least our reference. Now, I'm going to do this as a dotted line. I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to draw a sine curve that just goes like this right here. And where this right here is 2 pi, this right here is pi, this is pi over 2. Remember, that's half of that. And then we go 1, 2, 3 pi over 2. And this value right here is 1, and this right here is negative 1. Now, why did I draw a dotted line? Because that's not the whole graph. We want the whole graph, but we want to do something to it. This one right here, what does this mean? Well, you would think, oh, negative, and I know it's horizontal, so if it goes negative, I would think it goes to the left, but it's opposite to what you might think. So that means it goes... We're going to say the vertical, uh, whoops, not vertical, sorry, horizontal. Maybe I'll call it horizontal uh, translation. In this case right here, it's going to be, uh, well, right by pi over 2. That's going to be important. Now, because you think it would go left because it's a minus, but it does opposite to what you think, so that's why it's right. Uh, the reason why that is is just because of the way it's, it's uh, the notation works. It says actually b, uh, sorry, x minus c. So if c itself is positive, you do a negative. So it's just it's just a matter of being careful with this. But this is what it really means for you. So it does opposite of what you think. If it says x minus pi over two, you might think it goes left. That means it goes right. So that means I can take each of these points then, this one point here, this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, and I can take them each and move them all to the right by pi over 2. So I'm going to start with this first one here. This point which was here, I'm going to move it right by pi over 2, there it is. This one over here goes right by pi over 2. This one also goes right by pi over 2. This one also goes right by pi over 2. This one right here goes right by pi over 2. And there was a point which was down here that went right by pi over 2, so that'll be over here. So in other words, right here, we're going to have some sort of graph that does something like this. So that might seem complicated, but basically just take this graph and move everything to the right by pi over 2. That's all. So just take the original graph, move everything to the right. And that's how we deal with these. Now these could be really complicated, and that's why we just got to be very, very careful. Finally comes the easiest one, which is D. This is just a vertical translation. So in other words, here, when it was a horizontal translation, in other words, just left or right, over here, this one right here tells you up or down. So this here tells you sort of up or down by however much this is. So if it says like, I don't know, this is plus 8, then it goes up by 8. And this one right here tells you left or right. This basically tells you, do you transform it? Do you drag everything left or right? And this one over here, you drag everything up or down. It's just a matter of what the number is and then you can figure it out. So for example we have cos x plus 2. Again it really helps to just try to draw this whole thing and figure out again what everything is. So here we have the amplitude is the number in front of cos so that's 1. We have the period Remember now the number in front of x which is b. Uh, the period is 2 pi over b so in this case since b is 1 it's just 2 pi. We don't have any, I'm going to call it horizontal translation, so HT. I'm going to say HT equals zero. In other words, it doesn't go left or right, but we do have a vertical translation. This tells us it's, um, in this case here, up by two. So this is very descriptive. This tells us what to do. It means draw yourself a graph of cos, which has an amplitude of one and two pi, and take that whole thing and drag everything up by two. 
So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to draw myself a graph of cos in dotted lines, of course, like this right here. I'm going to label this as 2 pi, and this is pi, therefore this is pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. And normally this does 1, and this is minus 1. So I'm going to need to also graph 2, and I'm going to also need to graph 3. Turns out I'm going to need those as well. I'm just going to clear this up a little bit. So this is my y-axis, this is a value of 1. So what I have to do then is each one of these points here, I've got to take this point and this point and this point and this one and this one, and of course all the other ones, but I've got to take this one period here and take it and drag everything up by two. So I take this one, instead of being here, it's actually here. Take this one, instead of being here, it's here. This one, instead of being here, it's there. This one goes up. This one here also goes up by two. So you can hopefully see then it does this. In fact, we can draw a little dotted line here, and you can sort of see that this is where everything oscillates around. So it goes sort of up by one and down by one from this point where it's gone up by. So before, where this here was a zero, then it went up by one and down by one for the amplitude. See here, the amplitude is still one. And the reason that can be is because it starts off at two, and it goes up by one from two, so that's two plus one is three, and it goes down by one, and two minus one is one. So that's why, even though it oscillates between one and three, it still has an amplitude of one. Because this is your sort of rest point, it's like where it wants to be. It goes up by one, and it goes down by one, and up by one, and down by one. So that's how we draw y equals cos x plus 2. Notice we did not need a calculator. Now we can do other functions as well. We've got negative f of x, we've got that one as well. It helps to know what that one does. Uh, so for example, negative uh, sine of x, what that does, that, um, what does it do? It does a mirror or a... You could say flips or rotates or reflects. So flips across the, in this case here is the x-axis. This one right here, if you've got f of negative x, that flips across or reflects across the y-axis. So that's how these work. So uh, for example, if I've got y equals minus sine of x, that's going to look just like a y equals sine x, except I'm going to flip it. So in other words, here I'm going to draw myself y equals sine x. But instead of that, I'm going to flip it across the x-axis. So that means this point over here goes down. This point over here stays the same, stays the same, and this one goes up. In other words, we're going to have something like this. That'll be your function. Where, of course, this is 1, this is negative 1, and this is, of course, 2 pi. As usual, this is pi. This is pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. Just to show you how the graph goes. We can, of course, flip across the y-axis. Now, this may not look that interesting because if I did it uh, the whole thing, you actually won't notice that much. But let me just let me just pretend I just did one little piece of that period here. If I flip across the y-axis, it'll go like this. So in other words, this is your y-axis here. This is the x-axis. So it'll actually flip and go like this. Of course, it would keep going, right? It would go like this and like this and so on. But just to show you at least how it goes. So it flips across the y-axis. Now we can use these and put everything together in order to solve all sorts of questions. So this really helps, I think, to put everything back together again. Because these equations, now for y equals a sine b of x minus c plus d, that works for sine, but it also works for cos. So it's just a matter of where it starts and what its amplitude is and all that. So this is sort of how it works in general. You do this, and don't forget about what each of these is. Absolute value of a, that's the amplitude, so a vertical stretch. B is not equal to the period, but the period is 2 pi over B, and that is called a horizontal stretch. Now you've got a phase shift, or a vertical shift. Uh, sorry, a horizontal shift, I mean. I should call that. Some people call it a phase shift, especially in physics we say that, but let's just say it's a horizontal or phase shift. In other words, it shifts left or right. It's a horizontal translation. And remember, this one here goes opposite of what you think. And you've got a vertical shift, so up or down. So this is really what these mean, right? This here means left or right. And over here, this other one here means up or down. So once you know these, then you can actually start solving all sorts of questions. So for example here, we can say, explain how you can start with a graph of y equals sine x and finish with a graph of y equals 3 sine of 2x. Well, you can just talk about the uh, transformations needed. I mean, what I could actually do is, is just draw it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I can actually just draw that. So this here is x, this is y. y equals sine x goes like this, doesn't it? Like that. Where this is 2 pi, this is pi, this is pi over 2. Are you getting tired of seeing this? 
If so, good. It means you're getting it at least. This here is 1, and this is negative 1. Now, what does this say? This is what I start with. That's y equals sine x. What does this really tell me? This tells me right here that I have to make my amplitude 3. So that means uh, this whole thing right here is going to go up. This is 2. Over here, this is 3. Over here, this is minus 2. Down here is minus 3. We're just going to go up and down by 3. And it's going to be, um, in this case here, let's write these down. So we have the amplitude equals 3. However, the period is going to be 2 pi over b, which in this case is 2. So the period is just going to be pi. So because of that, then my new one has to have a period of only pi. So it has to be right here. And it has to go from here to here. It has to go all the way up to 3, all the way down, all the way down here and there. So it's actually going to be really, really stretched. It's going to look like this. Something like that. Now, we actually haven't answered the question. So how can we start with a graph of this and finish with this graph? I mean, there's there's the real question, right? We want to actually see, like, what, what would we have to do to it in order to actually get what we want? And we can actually do this. I mean, we can actually take a look at it. We can describe it. Right here, we would have to do this one right here. This one here represents a vertical stretch. That's what this is, remember? It's a vertical stretch by a factor of, and this is how you could write it. You can say it by a factor of, in this case right here, 3. That's the first answer. The second answer is this one right here would be a horizontal. Now here it depends if you want to say stretch or a compression. It really depends on how you want to actually say it. You could say it's a stretch by a factor of, in this case right here, by a factor of 1 over 2. You know, you stretch it by 1 over 2. You can say it's a compression by a factor of 2. But this at least tells you what to do, right? It tells you stretch everything. And I would like to imagine this is like a rubber band, like the original equation. Imagine you grab this piece, so it stretched it up and stretched it up. And you took that thing and you, you also squished everything in. And this is what you get. And of course it continues, right? I mean, you could be asked to graph this for any distance, but I mean, it's sort of keep going forever. But I think it's just clear to just show you at least what one period looks like. So that's how we can deal with these. We can do even another one like this. This is an even grosser looking one. But let's just start by just being methodical and figuring out what we know here. This is going to be a little bit tougher, but it's okay. We can do it. We know that the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of 2. So in this case, just 2. We know that the period is going to be b. In other words, whatever number is in front of this. So that's going to be 2 pi over b. So 2 pi over 1 is just 2 pi. Now we have a um, vertical. Oh no, sorry, not vertical, horizontal translation. In other words, left or right. And we can actually describe that. This it makes you think it goes to the right by 2, the pi over 2. That means it must be left by pi over 2. So that helps us. We know we have to take whatever we had and shove it to the left by pi over 2. And what else can we do here? We can actually take this whole thing then and do what? We can do a vertical translation. This means down by 1. This is a little bit complicated. So let's actually try to draw this. We'll draw it maybe really big. So we have a chance here. Like this. Now what I'm going to do then is, uh, and keep in mind, we only want to draw it between 0 and pi. So in here we've actually been given a range, which is really important then because that's all we care about is between 0 and pi. So I'm just going to draw this. So this is going to be 0, and maybe I'll just draw, maybe I'll draw pi, I don't know, maybe, maybe here. And then double that will be 2 pi, just so we have some idea where we're sitting. This is pi over 2, and this must be then 1, 2, 3 pi over 2. So originally, let's just start off with a graph of, I'm actually going to deal with these two first. In other words, I'm going to just try to deal with these two. I'm going to make a dotted line, and I'm going to make a dotted graph that deals with this. I'm going to start with that, because see, in order to do everything, I find it helps to do a little piece and then drag it and move it. So here, I'm going to just draw something that has an amplitude of 2 and a period of 2 pi. That's a cos. So if that was the case, I would say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is negative 3. So in order to do this little piece here with amplitude 2 and period of 2 pi, I'm going to draw myself a little dotted line version of cos. So what does cos look like? Well, it would be starting up here, and it would be something that would go, um, let's say, start here, and it would go all the way down, like, uh, in this case right here, like, oops, I better draw it carefully here. So it goes something that starts here, it finishes here, it has its bottom down here. So it'd be something that goes like this. 
some sort of graph. This would be a cosine graph that at least passes through these points. This deals with amplitude of 2, period of 2 pi, and is a cosine, right? Because cosine starts off at uh, x equals 0, it starts off at its highest. Now I want to also, so I've, I've dealt with this, you could say. Now what I want to do is deal with the horizontal translation. I want to deal with the fact that it goes left by pi over 2. So what I would normally do then is draw myself another dotted line or maybe erase this one and shift everything to left by pi over 2. Now what I can do here on a computer, I hope this works, that uh, there I can totally cheat. So I can take each of these, and remember pi over 2 is one of these distances here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this point right here and move it until it's over here. So I'm going to drag it until this point is right here. There we go. Wasn't that cheap? So now I just dealt with now I've just dealt with this piece right here. So that's also dealt with. Now I got to deal with the fact that it's got to be down by one. So I'll take this whole thing then and then drag everything down by one. That means this point right here, which was here, I would drag it down by one. It would be there. And this point, which is right here, I would drag that down by one. And this one over here, which is right here, it would go down by. Uh, oops, I guess I didn't do it quite right. This should have been up here. It'll be down here. So it'll be some sort of graph that goes like this. I mean, this right here is what it'll look like, something like that. The reason it didn't work perfectly is because my scale isn't perfect. This right here should have been. My little dotted line should have looked like this. My dotted line should have gone like this. Should have passed through this, you know, if I had done it right. Remember, I didn't draw this perfectly. In other words, the space between those wasn't perfect. But this gives me an idea how to do it. And this is the piece that I actually have. This would be my graph. Now, if you're not sure, you can always use your lovely graphing calculator. So I'm going to take out my calculator here. I'm going to start off with everything here. I'm going to actually just clear everything. I'm just going to say, um, what is it, zoom. I'm going to say zoom standard, just to sort of start off with a nice clear graph here. And I'm even going to clear this. So I'm just going to have everything like this. So now if I look at my graph, I've got nothing. So now what I want to try to do is try to see what this graph looks like, just to check that I did it right. I think I did, but let's let's double check. So how do I do that? I first make sure I'm in the right mode. So now I gotta make sure I'm in radian mode so I can scroll down and make sure it's radian. If it wasn't, I would put it there and press enter. So now I can quit and get out of that. So now I'm on no, I'm in radian mode. I should put in my equation. So y equals two times cosine of x plus, and to be absolutely sure it doesn't mess it up, I'm gonna put brackets here and say pi over two. Now I gotta close my brackets one more time because I opened it twice, so I gotta close it twice. Take that whole thing and say minus one. Now I wanna be very careful with my window because I have a specific window I wanna look at here. So I'm gonna press window and I wanna go from x equals zero to pi because that's what they told us. We only cared about from zero to pi. That's why I only bothered to draw it between here and here. I don't care what it does the rest of the way. I only want it from here to here. So zero to pi. And maybe for my y values, maybe I go from minus 3 to 3, just like I have on mine. So I'll say minus 3, and I'll say 3. Now this should work. Let's see what it looks like. Hey, look at that. It looks like this, doesn't it? This is something that starts off at negative 1, goes all the way down to negative 3, and goes back up to negative 1. So this is my graph. Obviously, if I stretch this out to the right, then it would look like this. It's at least nice to know that we can do this without a calculator, um, and I think it's pretty amazing.